Hello everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day and today guys we're going to be going over my best critical strike build for Liza P. So if you guys are looking for a build where you can just critically strike on just about every single enemy in nearly 100% of the time and do absolutely insane amounts of damage, so I'm pretty sure inside Liza P they do have a 2 times multiplier for critical strike damage. So if that sounds interesting to you, then well I've got the build for you. So what makes this build so good? I did just touch on one of the points that make it so good and that is that we're able to do insane amounts of damage because when you do critically strike in this game I'm pretty sure it's a two times multiplier I could be completely wrong there maybe it's 1.5 but it really does seem like it's a two times multiplier again it's hard to test things in lines of P because you do get so many variations of damage but one thing I can rest assured is when you are critting you are absolutely hitting like a truck this build does have pretty good weapon variety we don't have a lot of weapons to choose from especially when we are trying to prioritize critically striking and critical strike damage but they're not terrible by any means necessary so I do feel like this build does have a little bit of versatility if you're not happy with one weapon there are some other weapons that can fit your liking now this build is quite quick I did recently do a motivity build and that's like strength build so you are using heavy slow weapons you're kind of heavy slow it's all about guarding and perfect guarding and just dealing the most amount of damage you can with one big swing so this build isn't like that you're not restricted you're not restricting yourself with weapon movement speed or the weapon that you do use with a critical strike build or at least with this build are very quick and also depending on your weapon choice as well you can nearly get up to a hundred percent critical strike chance which is absolutely a surge you can really make light work of a lot of elites especially if you're just smacking them with critical strike damage and even more so if you're using elemental grindstones I think when you critically strike you do a lot more damage especially if you're using an element that that enemy is weak to so enough fifth faffing around let's jump straight into the stats now full disclaimer this is I'm obviously on my second playthrough so this is kind of like a new game plus build but that won't restrict you if you do want to try and use this build on like your first playthrough there are two weapons that you can get on your first playthrough and then the other weapon that you can use is locked behind the very last boss in the game the actual final boss of Liza P so I know right now my stats look very inflated because I am on my new game plus plus run but I am still going to break down the stats that you should kind of be aiming for if you are trying to use this build on just a new game run in general now first up we have vitality I would personally aim for 30 vitality on a on a first new game run that way you're going to have more than enough health and I feel like you wouldn't need to even worry about putting any more points in vitality I feel like 30 is a pretty decent benchmark to try and get to. Now for Vigor, if you are on a new game run, I would try and aim for probably like 15, 17. I feel like that's all you need. Weight isn't going to be too much of an issue anymore because they did kind of fix capacity. And this isn't a build that's carrying a lot of uh, weight anyway. So you're probably going to be all right. So you're probably going to be okay on your actual stamina regeneration. Uh, moving on to capacity, I would try and aim for maybe 20 in capacity. You could go 25. Capacity is arguably one of the best stats inside of Liza P because not only does it let you wear more equipment, which means more defense, more damage, it also increases your overall damage reduction on pretty much everything physical fire electric blizz and acid they're very nice resistances to have because they are just going to keep you alive longer overall now another thing i completely forgot to mention is this is more of a quality build so you're going to be trying to aim for 35 to 40 motivity and also 35 to 40 technique this way whenever you use the weapons that i'm going to be showcasing in this build they do scale off both motivity and technique and that way it's going to give you a lot more bonus damage instead of just stacking into one stat like motivity or technique and this is not an advanced build so you do not have to worry about advanced at all now if you are on a new game plus run or a new game plus plus run or even further than that obviously your stats are probably going to look similar to mine anyway so you're probably just going to be able to slot this build in and try it out uh, regardless but if you are in a new game plus run try and uh, follow those stats that I did give you you're probably going to have more this is just a rough estimate if you say you get to like level 90 now moving on over to the weapons guys now not every single weapon does have critical strike rating there's only a few weapons we are working with that actually do have a 30 percent uh, critical rating or critical strike rating now the first one and arguably the best one hands down is trident of the covenant this weapon slaps man this weapon is so good it is a c uh, scaling for motivity and it is a, also a B scaling for technique so that's why it works the best with quality builds. I feel like this is arguably the strongest of the three weapons that I'm going to be showcasing today that does have critical rate or critical strike rating on it. So with an extra 30% we're able to get more critical strikes out than if, than if we will use a weapon that doesn't have any critical strike rating. And there is also a grindstone that we can use which gives us more critical strike chance on our weapons and these do stack obviously i have tested out if you if you just use your normal weapon you will get some critical strikes uh here and there the fable arts for the trident is actually pretty good it's a link rush stab you 
stab forward and then you kind of like jump up in the air if you continue with the Fable Arts and then you slam back down. It is actually really good Fable Arts. It's nice to, uh, you know, advance on the enemy if they're a little bit back. You can Fable Arts because you get the first lunge and then you'll be like right in front of the enemy and then you can continue using that Fable Arts and you'll drop down on and do big damage. It's actually a really cool Fable Arts to use with the Trident. And then for the handle with the Trident, because obviously we can't dismantle it, it's a special weapon, uh, we do have Guard Parry. Now I don't think you're going to use this Fable Arts too much, but it is nice that it is there. Maybe you're someone that's really good at uh, using the, the Guard Parry Fable Arts. This is, maybe this is right up your alley. I don't really use that much. I've tried getting used to it. The timing is a little, little weird. I'm sure if I had kept practicing, I would eventually get it but it is nice that this is an actual parry not just a perfect guard you're not just perfect guarding the enemy's attack this is actually deflecting their attack and then you attack them which does massive pops of damage and just big damage in general now I know what you're thinking the trident weapon is a special weapon maybe you're someone that went and got the amulet now you don't have the trident weapon it's okay I got you so next up we do have the tyrant murderer's dagger blade now on paper this doesn't really look that great but the tyrant's murderer's dagger does have a fable arts called grind which does put more critical strike chance on the blade kind of like the proof of humanity which we will get into uh, in a minute so you're able to further increase your critical strike without having to use that grindstone which is a massive w and then the shovel handle fable arts is alter temporally transform the weapon handle into its long form yeah the long form and it boosts its attack. Now the Tyrant Murderous Dagger on its own is kind of pretty weak because it is just a dagger, but it is very quick. If you're someone that doesn't want to be hindered by a slow weapon, this is definitely the way to go if you're someone that wants to do a critical strike build. But the military shovel handle is really heavily underrated because of that altar, you're able to make it longer and you're able to boost its attack. And then on top of that, you can grind with the Tyrant's Murderer Dagger to increase your critical strike rate. So you're able to make this a very competitive option against the Trident and also against the Proof of Humanity. Now again, it does feel a little underwhelming when you're not using any of the Fable Arts for this weapon, but it is still a very fun option and it's definitely a fun one to try out, especially with someone that's not too afraid to perfect guard in this game because especially with just having a little dagger, we have no guard damage reduction whatsoever. So. This is definitely, a, if you're definitely going to use the Tyrant Murder Dagger, I would make sure that you can perfect guard properly. Otherwise, just guard and you're going to have a hell of a bad time. Now, last but not least, if you do go and kill the Nameless Puppet at the very end of the game, you are able to get his boss ergo and claim it in for the Proof of Humanity. Now, this is a really fun weapon to use. It does just fall behind the Trident in damage, but it does have more utility than the Trident. This weapon has both B scaling and motivity and technique perfect for like a quality style build. It has pretty good damage reduction while guarding as well. So if you're someone that just wants to guard, this is probably the weapon of choice uh, compared to the other two. It's Fable Arts, it's very solid. You do get a Link Slash. You're able just to chain a whole bunch of slashes together. They're really, really strong. And it can absolutely carve through big packs of enemies like butter. You don't have to worry about getting overwhelmed anymore. You just drop Link Slash out and they're all dead. Happy days. And then this also has grind on the handle, which again, temporarily increases our critical strike chance, which just like the Tyrant's Murderer's Dagger, it's really good because we're able to then increase our critical strike chance without having to use Grindstone. And then you can use the Grindstone if you want, the one that boosts your critical strike chance, to even further boost your critical strike chance. If you have Grind and the uh, critical strike chance Grindstone, both active on the Proof of Humanity or the Tyrant's Murderer's Dagger, you've nearly got 100% critical strike chance. It really does feel that way sometimes. It just feels like every hit that you, you hit is just a crit. It's definitely not 100%, you still miss some, but it's obviously hard because we have no percentages to actually go off. We don't know how much is actually increasing our critical strike chance. But I would like to think because these weapons have 30% critical strike rating, that everything else that boosts critical strike chance is probably going to be about 30%. Again, that's just an assumption, that's not fact, but... It does feel that way. Now, moving on over to the amulets, guys. I am using the blue guardship amulet plus one. This increases our max amount of HP, stamina, and legion. This is this is such a strong amulet. I absolutely love this amulet. Next up, we do have the extreme modification amulet. This is a, one of the boss amulets you can get. This increases weapon attack in proportion to the number of fable slots. I'm not sure if this is whether they're full fable slots or not. It does kind of feel like maybe it is when they're full. 
Um, maybe someone, maybe one of you guys in the comment would be able to confirm that. But either way, the more Fable slots you have, the more damage you, you do get from this amulet. So if you have five Fable slots, this is going to be kind of like a best in slot for you. I am also using the Conqueror's amulet. This is when we get a perfect guard. This temporarily increases our attack. I have seen some numbers thrown out there, but it does seem like it's anywhere from 25 to 30%. And I think this varies on what weapon you're actually using. But this is a massive damage increase if you're someone that can get perfect guards down. And then last but not least, we are using the Assassin's Amulet. This is going to increase our critical strike damage, basically. It does say critical attack, so whenever we critically strike, I'm pretty sure this is going to increase our critical strike damage. Very strong amulet, best in slot amulet for us, especially because we are using a critical strike build. Now, I understand I do have two boss amulets in here. If you do want to switch them out, the best options are to just use any of the amulets and increases your damage against the targets, whether they be puppet, human, or carcass. This is all going to be a 10% increase. So if you guys do not have the extreme modification amulet, I'd highly recommend putting those on. And now if you don't have the Conqueror's amulet and you don't have any other boss amulet to put on, like uh, even the Armor God is really good because it's going to give you more damage the more damage you do to an enemy. Probably could just put on something def defensive. You could take even more health by just putting on a life amulet plus one or something like that. It's completely up to you. This is just the amulet selection that I found worked the best for me. Now moving on over to the defensive parts, guys. Just make sure you put on anything that you're able to wear that won't hinder your equipment load. So just put on the best damage reduction stuff that you can actually wear and then when it comes down to the uh, converters and the cartridges this is going to be based on whatever enemy you're fighting so this cartridge here has a massive shock resistance this is really good for like the door guardian and any enemy that hits you with that annoying shock that makes it so your standard work doesn't recharge as quickly and the converter is just put on any converter for whatever element that you are fighting if the enemy is using fire use a fire one if the enemy is using fire use a fire one if the enemy is using uh, decay and acid use a, a corrosive one now moving on over to the p organs guys now this is going to come down to personal preference but i will still go over a lot of the upgrades that i feel like are absolutely necessary for just about any build inside eliza p now the best ones to get early on are the increases to pulse cells the more heals you have the more chance you have to stay alive and maybe clutch out some boss fights that you are struggling with. I know a lot of people like the link dodge. You can go ahead and get the link dodge if you want. I think increasing the staggable window is very handy. Personally, me, I went for the staggable window first. I feel like this is very, very strong. Same with guard regain. Anything that's going to stop you taking as much damage when you are guarding is also going to be very, very strong. The rising dodge is very handy. You don't need it. Same with the Link Dodge, I don't really think you need it. They are nice quality of life changes. Getting an extra amulet slot is absolutely huge because this is going to increase your defense and your damage, depends on which way you go. Getting a perfect guard which breaks enemies out of their attack chain or their fury attacks is very handy to have as well. I think this is one of the strongest P organs you can get inside of Liza P. Now again, because I am on New Game Plus Plus, I have put a lot of my uh, quartz already into pretty much nearly every single passive upgrade you can take. But I'm going to go over a few of the notable ones that I feel like are very handy or at least help me out on a lot of my playthroughs. Anything that is going to enhance stagger and also how much damage you do to the enemies is going to be an absolute must in a tap type. So a charge attack stagger, very nice. We're going to get more stagger off our charge attack. Increasing the stagger duration, again, very nice. I think arguably one of the best passives to get early on is perfect guard destruction this makes a lot of the early boss fights that people struggle with a hell of a lot easier stagger from behind is also really good increasing more stagger now for the survival ones i i would prioritize a lot of guard regain again guard is super op in this game as long as you're guarding you're not taking any damage and you can just hit the enemy and get your health back anything that's going to lower your do uh, damage as well while dodging i feel like this is huge um, enhancing your pulse cell recovery is very nice. Always pick up the increases to pulse cells. Again, having more heals means you can survive for longer. Really strong one, your perfect guard, guard regain recovery. So whenever you perfect guard, you're able to heal yourself from that damage that you previously lost when you were guarding. This is very strong. You don't have to hit the enemy anymore or stress out about hitting the enemy to get your health back. You can just perfect guard and it does that for you. Now the ability one, you're gonna to wanna to go for anything that's going to reduce the stamina cost of any of your attack. Perfect guard to get Fable back is also nice, not needed, but it is nice. A massive one is reducing stamina consumption while dashing, very nice. As you progress more through the game, weapon durability doesn't, come beca doesn't become as much of an issue, but on your first playthrough, taking a little bit of extra weapon durability can go a long way, especially with the amount of enemies that have fucking decay. It is so brutal. 
that status effect. I friggin' love it. And also perfect guarding to get your fable back as well is also very nice. Again, I wouldn't worry too much about the item type. This is mainly for when you do more playthroughs. It is just nice having more ergo upon eliminating enemies. But besides that, this is all very niche upgrades that I wouldn't really worry about unless you are just trying to get all the passives in the game. Now, moving on over to the grindstones, I do recommend that you guys at least try out or 100% that you need to take these grindstones. Now, make sure you get all of the elemental ones. Fire is the best for the carcass enemies. Electric is the best for puppet enemies and acid is the best for human enemies. Acid also works on Laxia as well. She does count as a human enemy. You'll absolutely disintegrate her with acid. She doesn't like it that much. Now, moving on over to the utility grindstones. These are ones that I highly recommend you guys try out. Now, the first one, obviously, being the one that increases our critical strike rating and that just means that we're able to do more damage on the enemy because we're able to hit more crits. Now, next up is the perfection grindstone. Now, this is going to let you perfect guard for a limited time. So as long as you have this grindstone on your weapon, you're able to perfect guard everything. So all you have to do is just guard and then whenever the enemy hits you, it will be perfect guarded. That simple, perfect for breaking uh, through fury attacks or just getting extra poise damage early on on the enemy or boss. Now moving on to what I think are the best legion arms for this build. First up is the puppet string. The puppet string is good for everything, man. It is such a fantastic legion arm to have and the reason why it's so good besides being able to pull enemies and pull yourself to enemies is the attack link you hold down the legion ability you you hit the enemy you go over to them you go flying in the air and then you slam down with a massive charge attack this is really strong very op to just go through just about any elite in the game now the other one that i've been warming up to a lot is the deuce x marshina this is the one that lets you put mines on the ground this hits like a truck now each one of these mines does a thousand damage absolutely insane you can Pretty much nuke most elites by just putting three mines down, um, hitting them with a bunch of attacks. The mines blow up, they're probably going to get staggered and groggy, and then you fatal them and they're dead. This is really good for bosses if you can set it up as well. If you can set all three mines up, get the boss to come over to you, perfect guard them a bit, wait for them to blow up. Um, sometimes they get staggered, you can get some free hits. I thought this was really strong with Laxia, it was really fun. Second phase, you just put all the mines down. Uh, when she finishes doing the lightning, she comes slamming down on the ground into a fucking face full of mines. Take that. I feel like the Deuce X Marshina is a really fun one to actually try around with, especially because we are putting some more points into Motivity because it's quality build. It does scale off Motivity very strong. But the best thing about Liza P is every Legion arm is just really good. It all has their own separate uses. Some are better than others, but... Pretty much all legion arms work and that is basically it for the video guys hopefully this build video does help you out it's so hard to pick a favorite weapon or a favorite build inside of liza p considering how like fun everything really is but i have to say the critical strike build has really warmed up to me i feel like this has so far been the most fun build i have used i am moving on over to advanced next i know a lot of people have done advanced builds so i'm probably not going to do a build of that because there's you know, not too many advanced weapons to actually go over. But I know advanced is insanely strong inside of this game. So I'm very excited to actually get into advanced. But I think so far the critical strike build has got to be the most fun build I have used inside Eliza P so far. Appreciate all the love and support on the videos as always guys. And until next time, stay safe. Peace out.